Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Empowering Musicians podcast. I'm your host, Michael Manley, the founder of Empowering Musicians. And I'm recording this episode earlier because I'm going to be engaged uh, Saturday in some labor activity. Um, as you know, election season's coming up. So I'll be out um, with some of my labor colleagues, um, you know, uh, at a rally. We also have uh, Gay Pride happening this weekend here in Las Vegas. We do this um, not in June, which is normal, because in June it's about 175 degrees in Las Vegas. So excited about um, that weekend coming up. We also have a Renaissance Fair happening uh, in Sunset Park. I sound like the local news, but it's all true. It's all happening this weekend. So coming to you uh, uh, by recording today. And I wanted to talk this week uh, in my episode about an elevator speech. So the title of this episode is, what is an elevator speech and why do artists need one? So um, there are two categories that I wanna talk about. One is an elevator speech and the other is an elevator pitch. So in terms of an elevator speech, it's really about you and it's, what you do, why, and the impact that you uh, make or hope to make. So where does the term elevator speech come from? Well, the idea is if you're stuck on an elevator for 30 seconds and you run into a world famous conductor or let's say a choreographer, or you're at a donor dinner and you meet somebody who can give your organization thousands and thousands of dollars, how do you engage that person in a very short time, 30, minute, 30 seconds to a minute, around what it is that you do um, and who you are. So I have three examples that I'm gonna share with you that are all kind of from my own life uh, today. And the first one I'm gonna focus on, again, is this idea of an elevator speech, which is about us. So <clears throat> um, you wanna start and have a few of these from like a paragraph to maybe a half a paragraph to even a sentence. So I worked with a coach, my coach, Martin Cowart, um, for a long time on crafting my own kind of mission statement, which is the briefest elevator speech that uh, we have, right? And so I did a lot, it took a long time to do this because we have to go deep in ourselves. We have to really examine why it is we do what we do. And it's, it's sometimes we don't really want to go there because it's not, it's not a place that we live in. It may be uncomfortable. We don't want to really examine our reasons for what we do to, to find that deep reason for um, um, our rationale for what it is that we do, which is in fact our mission, right? So it does require us to go a little bit deep and it, it can feel vulnerable to do that. Um, so after a lot of, um, of, of work, um, I came up with this elevator speech. Um, actually, I came up with the mission statement, which is that um, I create a world of harmony and artistic transformation by empowering and educating musicians and artists. Um, I might say I foster a world of harmony and artistic transformation. So what do I mean by this? Well, I think I became an artist because I like this idea of sharing with the world, um, in my case, music, right? Um, and bringing joy through this art form. Um, and to me, music, when done well, in my genre, it's classical music, right? Or in some cases, Broadway style music. Those were the lanes that I lived in, opera, symphonic, and Broadway. And in all of those forms, and many, many others as well, but the forms that I lived in, um, you really have the power to transform audiences. You have the power to transform communities uh, through music. Um, I later went into um, non-performing roles within my industry, some on the management side of things, mostly on the labor side of things. Now, here's what's cool. This uh, um, personal mission statement I create a world of harmony and artistic transformation by empowering and educating musicians and artists also fits all of my off instrument work, right? Um, lately, I've also been engaged with helping um, build the arts in my community of the Hen Las Vegas and Henderson area here in Nevada. And again, that also fits with this personal mission statement. So 
Um, it sounds very, very short and it sounds um, like kind of, you know, uh, tossed off, but a lot of thought and a lot of time um, and a lot of thinking and kind of meditating went into coming up with that um, personal mission statement, which is kind of my elevator speech, right? And if, if I have time to go deeper, I might say, well, um, you know, when I was in grad school, my career was almost ended. When I was mugged and my jaw was broken in three places. Um, as a result, I thought I would never play again. So I'm extremely grateful for the career that I've had and the work that I've done. And I especially love passing that on through education to beginning, returning, and recovering French horn players. That's a longer version, right? That might be my elevator speech about who I am and what I do, especially if I'm gonna be talking to an audience of teachers, right? Um, so this is um, my personal mission. I also, um, I also write, and so there is this kind of idea of artistic transformation that comes through in this creativity. So I did wanna have the word create in there. I create this world of harmony and artistic transformation. Um, and one of the ways I do it is by empowering and educating musicians and artists. It's not the only way, right? Um, but we need this to be a really compact statement that for me focuses on the main things that I do. Um, now, a lot of, I was like this way, right? I never thought about doing this. A lot of musicians, a lot of dancers, actors, sculptors, writers, whatever it is that you do. Um, a lot of this work is very inner, it's very solitary and it's very um, uh, insular and it is not extroverted, right? We, we tend to, a lot of us be introverts because we are living in our own uh, world so much, whether it's sitting in a practice room for eight hours a day or staring at, at a blank piece of paper um, before you uh, take a pen to make a drawing or start typing words, or you're a dancer in a ballet studio uh, warming up and practicing your dance moves for, for hours on end. It's very solitary work and we don't like to talk about ourselves and we don't necessarily wanna think about this stuff and basically we wanna just say, why is this even necessary? Because I just do this one thing really well. Like I, I just wanna direct, I just wanna paint, I just wanna play my instrument, that's all I wanna do. Why do I need to bother? Well, <clears throat> the reason you need to bother is because you're gonna be at a gallery opening, at a post-concert reception, you're gonna have a chance encounter with a very important person in your field. Um, you're gonna have uh, job interviews, you're gonna have networking opportunities, and you're gonna be applying, if you're in the nonprofit sector, for grants um, that are gonna support your work. You have to be able to tell your story, right? And so all this is, is really telling our own stories. And you have to be able to do it because before somebody's gonna hire you, um, or before somebody may, may engage with your artwork, they're gonna, they're gonna wanna know a little bit about who you are. And it's gonna be um, something that ideally will entice them into wanting to engage with you more. So um, you want, um, so everybody needs to think about this. You need to think about what your elevator speech is for what you do. Um, and so in this elevator pitch, it, it can't just be, well, you know, I am a Juilliard trained cellist and I love to play the cello, right? So it has to be specific about you and have some sort of action in it and uh, result, right? So in, if we look at mine again, which is quite general, but it's it says, you know, my name is Michael Manley and I create a world of harmony and artistic transformation. Okay, that sounds really interesting. I wanna learn more. And how do I do that? I, I empower and educate musicians and artists. Again, my playing work was about uh, creating this artistic transformation through performances. My podcast is about doing this directly with a lot of my colleagues and um, new friends that I haven't met yet in the field. And my labor work is all about this as well. So again, it can't be generic and it has to be uh, something that's gonna make somebody say, I wanna learn more about this person. So it's not enough just to say, well, I play the violin really well, or I, I dance really well, or um, you know, I paint, right? Um, we have to create a compelling narrative through our own personal stories. And it's gotta be authentic more than anything else, right? You can't really BS your way through this. It's gotta be authentic to you and specific to you and your experience. So 
it can't just tell us that you're a great cello player or a great violin player or a great flute player. It has to tell us why you are a great cellist or flutist or violin player and the change that you hope to bring about through that, right? So keep that in mind when you're considering your own um, mission statement and developing one. And again, I think everybody has to have one of these. Now, there is another um, elevator model that I want to introduce, which is the pitch, right? So an elevator speech is about you. And it's about who you are, what you do, why you do it, and the impact that you make or hope to aspire to make. An elevator pitch is really about your um, service, your art, or your product. So um, I will give you two examples from, as I said, my own life. And these are elevator pitches, right? So I'm engaged with uh, an organization that is based in Henderson, Nevada, but serves the broader Las Vegas, Southern Nevada region. And it is called Making Music Matter Foundation, right? Four words, lots of letters, and not very descriptive. Our current elevator pitch, right? Our current mission statement is the Making Music Matter Foundation promotes culture and community in Las Vegas and around the world through unparalleled musical performances and education programs. Um, still not as specific as I think it needs to be, but you get the idea, right? Um, and so I'm going to be working with some of my colleagues on refining this um, because I still, um, I think it does explain the, the foundation really well, but it doesn't explain what's in the foundation, which is um, an award-winning uh, wind orchestra, uh, chamber music, and um, a youth uh, honor wind orchestra, as well as a summer camp for um, aspiring wind brass and percussion players. So all of those things are looped into this Music Matter, Making Music Matter Foundation. But if, again, if you're writing a grant and you need to fill in the blank that says your mission statement, this one sentence works for that. Um, so again, an elevator pitch is a mission statement for your organization. Um, now I'm gonna give a specific, an even more specific example about an elevator pitch for your work. So if you're an artist and you work in a certain medium like sculpture or, um, or oil paintings, you need to be able to talk about your work in this same way that is incredibly concise and hopefully compelling and uh, makes the listener wanna say, hmm, I'd like to know more. So, um, I, as many of you may know, am also a writer. And so I have a play which is called Float. And I, um, as much as I love the piece and as much as I love hearing readings of it and um, um, going back to it, and I've, I've uh, gone back to it over the many years and got it into a final shape that I'm very, very proud of. And then somebody um, introduced me to me this idea that like, well, you have to be able to say what it's about. And I'm like, well, that's really a good question. I, I Maybe after you read it, you can tell me because I really am not sure, right? I only wrote the thing. Why would I know what it's about? So it, it's an extremely intricate kind of meta play that uses theater as a metaphor for creation. And it uh, it's really hard to describe. And so I had to really force myself to sit down and say, oh my God, how do I describe this piece in a way that would explain the basics in a short amount of time while making it sound more interesting and having people want to learn more um, and not, not confuse them or not get off track, right? So I came up with my elevator pitch for my play called Float. Um, and this was probably the most torturous um, uh, of all of these that I've talked about. It was way harder in some ways than my personal mission statement. And I think because um, when we write something or when we create something, whether it's a piece of music that you've composed and somebody says, what is this piece about? You really have to, um, you know, you have to kind of examine it, right? And you have to go come at it with really fresh eyes 
And often we write things and we create things because we don't want to think about where what the source is. We just want to put it out there, right? Um, but especially in the world of drama and writing, you have to be able to tell what your novel's about, what your play's about. Um, you have to be able to, to talk about what your music is like if you're a composer and what attracts you to, to what you're writing or the piece that you're working on now that you want a conductor that you're meeting to perform, you have to be able to talk about that, right? And you have to be able to do it in a very, very short amount of time in a way that again is compelling and makes people want to learn more. So um, many, many tries, and this is the best I have so far for my play. Um, so Float is a divine comedy of manners, which tells the off-center love story of actors Marge and Charlie, whose characters, also named Marge and Charlie, are literally in over their heads as they struggle to survive as castaways on the open sea. The godlike chorus, an envious, all-powerful stagehand, brings on a storm of chaos as he drowns the script and takes center stage. As the chorus plots to escape a life in the wings and finally become a character in the world it created, Float explores that most human storytelling instinct to find our truth by making it all up. So that's a little longer than I want it to be. That's kind of like um, the old TV guide summary, right? Like if you wanted to you know, learn about a movie, what it's about, you might read this paragraph. I'm not sure that that makes the play much uh, interesting to, to many. Um, I think for certain theater companies that are really into intellectual or, um, you know, um, more sort of heady theater um, that is a theater about ideas, uh, meta theater, um, experimental theater, absurd, that kind of stuff, this is going to interest them. Not going to interest the person that wants to put on Driving Miss Daisy, right? It's not going inter to in interest the commercial theater uh, company that wants to produce very straight ahead uh, classics that are tried and true. So again, you get a little bit of that flavor from my description. Um, if I was going to start entering this, uh, reaching out to more producers, I might find a way to shorten this even more, right? Um, but this is the best that I've been able to come up with. Um, again, I would much rather have somebody see the piece and tell me what it's about because it's really hard sometimes to do this about our own work. Um, so again, an elevator speech is going to be your own personal story that is succinct and compelling and makes people that you interact with want to learn more about you and potentially work with you. An elevator pitch has to do with your organization or your personal artwork, right? So think about all of the people that you interact with, whether you're a performer who's at a post-concert reception, um, whether you are taking a course or studying with a teacher out of town that you may never see again, um, or you're just networking and interacting randomly with people who could make an impact on your career, either by producing your work, uh, showcasing, showcasing your visual of work if you're an artist, or hiring you as a performer, and think about all the reasons why you really actually do need this elevator speech. And again, you want it to talk about who you are, what you do and what makes you unique or special, and what impact that work is going to have on the larger world. If you can nail those three points, um, I think you're gonna have a successful elevator speech. I'm still working out the bugs with Facebook's new policy on StreamYard. So I've really had a great time doing these podcasts live on Facebook where the whole public can interact and engage. Right now they're being done as um, Facebook events only. Not sure why. Still working through that. So I want to uh, thank all of my audience members who are sticking with me. And please do remember that if you do miss the live uh, uh, broadcasts, you can find Empowering Musicians podcast on Spotify, also on YouTube, and uh, via my LinkedIn page. So get to work on your own elevator speech. It's going to serve you throughout your career, and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.